Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking safety wire. And how do you do that? So you just bought yourself a nice fancy two-piece rotor kit for your hot rod or muscle car. Congratulations, I can't afford one of those. And now you're looking to put it together and then in the instructions it talks about safety wire. What is that and how does it work? So what is the purpose of safety wire? Well the purpose of safety wire is to keep multiple fasteners. It could be as little as two, it could be three, it could be five, it could be ten. From loosening due to vibration. Now this is very predominant in the aerospace industry because of course aircraft vibrate, especially rotary wing helicopters, fixed wing, the engines, there's a lot of vibration in an aircraft. And you cannot simply pull off to the side of the road if something were to loosen off. But since this is a automotive based channel, I'm gonna show you some automotive applications for lock wire or safety wire as they call it. Some of those would be your knockoff wheels, picture of it over here. And others would be your two-piece brake rotors, picture over here. And if you can see by this picture, that is not a very good way to do lock wire or safety wire because it does not look very tight. So looking at the instructions, you may think, well, that looks fairly simple. But when you get down to it, you end up with a lot of bleeding fingers and something that is absolutely loose and looks like garbage. So I'm going to show you step by step how to do safety wire to ensure that none of those fasteners do end up coming loose. Because even though in automotive industry you could potentially pull over to the side of the road, if it's your brakes, you do not want them coming loose at all. And while I'm at it, I'm going to show you a couple different versions of lock wire. I'm going to show you the double strand or the double twist. I'm going to show you the single strand. And I'm going to show you how to lock wire a tube fitting to an elbow or to a jam nut or something like that if you're doing any sort of plumbing. So I'm going to show you how to keep your lock wire or your safety wire tight how not to stab yourself, and how to do it the right way. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you over my demonstration or my test lock where I'm gonna show you how it's done because I don't actually have a set of two-piece rotors or a fancy brake kit like that. I've got some old budget stuff going on here in the 81. Um, and while I show you how to do that, we're gonna talk about some of the rules of lock wire. And one of the rules I'd like to share with you right now is Depending on the style of lock wire, there is a twist per inch rule. Now the twist per inch rule um, that you're gonna probably be most uh, concerned with is seven to 10 twists per inch because that's gonna do the majority of the sizes of lock wire that are most common in these brake kits, which is probably 32 thou. Uh, seven to 10 uh, twists per inch will cover anything from 25 thou all the way up to probably close to 40 thou uh, lock wire. So that's the most common um, range that we're gonna look at and that's what we're gonna go by when we do our lock wiring on our demo piece. Um, other words of advice, keep your lock wire long. Don't keep it short. Long lock wire deflects and flexes and if you accidentally hit yourself with it, there's less chance you're gonna go right through your hand. Short pieces of lock wire, they're rigid. They're a lot more rigid and they are very sharp. They will go right through your hand. So you wanna keep the blood loss to a minimum while you're doing your lock wire and that's one of the ways to do it. Give yourself enough wire to work with and not to injure yourself. All right, well I've got my demonstration piece here. I don't actually have a two piece rotor to do the lock wiring to show you on, but I've got this little guy here. I made this years ago just sort of as of a training demo. Um, there's many different ways you can Twist, you can actually use your hands, you can use a pair of pliers, these are duckbill pliers, you know, you're not gonna have to twist one direction and then the other direction. And I'll show you the directions as we go into this. Um, most rotor kits will probably come with a pair of lock wire pliers like these. These are Chinese branded or something offshore. Um, these only twist the one way, so as you pull back, it's going to twist clockwise. Um, but you're gonna have to do your tail in the other direction counterclockwise, so you'll have to manually twist that. And of course, you've got blue point. Um, these are my blue point set, and these actually have a reverse. So as I pull in one direction, it'll twist clockwise, and if I twist this, it'll go counterclockwise. And so this is what I'm gonna use, because uh, this is what I'm most uh, familiar with. A lot of lock wire pliers have uh, different uh, types of teeth. 
These are uh, fairly uh, dull teeth here on the tip. Some of them actually have a wave in them. You want to minimize nicking the lock wire or uh, creating little uh, cuts and nicks and grooves in the lock wire as much as possible because that's actually going to become a stress riser or a point where the lock wire would fail. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to demonstrate uh, here how to do a double twist lock wire between let's say this bolt and this bolt and this would simulate what you have on your brake rotor. So I've got my piece of lock wire here. I'm going to start probably in this direction. I'm going to start by putting it through the hole here. And remember, we're trying to lock wire this so it's staying tight. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Okay, so now we've got our lock wire through the hole and I want my loop to go around. And again, I'm going clockwise on this twist and I'm going clockwise from the left bolt to the right bolt. So as I go over the head here, I want to keep this nice and tight and do a couple starter twists by hand. You don't want this loop here to come off the head of the bolt. And then I'm going to measure down to right about here. This is where the next hole is in the corresponding or the next bolt over that I'm lock wiring to. And then of course I'm going to hook my lock wire pliers in, turn it so it's twisting in the right hand spinning direction, give it a pull, and give one little extra twist there so it tightens up on the head and release. So now we've got our size measured out. We're almost there. I can give it a little bit extra. Perfect. And I'll go through now into that hole. There we go, into the hole here. Pulling that through nice and tight. And you can see that that lock wire is fairly tight. Now I'm gonna row, go over that bolt head again, and I'm gonna go counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, a couple twists by hand. So now you've got what you can see here. It is nicely wrapped around the head, and I'm gonna take my pliers again, grab them somewhere, I don't know, about three quarters of an inch down, tighten them, and then I'm gonna reverse the direction. Pull it once, give another quick little turn there, and we're good to go. I will cut off the tail, but of course, if you leave the tail like this, you can actually cut yourself. These are very, very sharp. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take that tail and we're gonna fold it over itself. There's many different ways to do this and keep it nice and tidy as such. So it's nice and tight. It's nice and tight and wrapped around the head. It will not come off and the tail is not gonna cut you. And we're maintaining our seven to 10 twists per inch roughly there. Again, this is a 25 thou lock wire going through a very small hole. But this is how you basically do the double twist. Okay, so I took it off and again, I'll do that one more time. So how much wire will you need to go between these two? Well, you wanna have at least double the wire obviously because you're twisting it. I go about two and a half to three times the length just to give me enough wire to play with. Give me enough wire so I can manipulate it where I want it. So I'm gonna go about that much wire there. Okay, so I've got roughly this much wire. Now I'm gonna start here. Once again, get it through both holes in the head of the first bolt. And always help a little bit. And pull that through. You pull it through so you've got the same amount of wire on either side of the bolt. Okay, roughly. And now you're gonna twist over the head, that loop over the head, and make it nice and tight by hand first. But you can see what would happen if I didn't tighten that up anymore. That's gonna wanna come off, right? If I left it kinda loose like this, it's gonna wanna come off. You want that tight. The purpose of the lock wire, again, is to stop the bolts from loosening through due to vibration. And there's slack in there. That bolt could technically loosen. Now, it's not gonna come off, it's not gonna come all the way out, but whatever it's holding, it's clamping together, it's gonna get looser. And that could be your brake rotor to your hub or your two-piece brake rotor. So you don't want vibration, you don't want loosening bolts in your brakes, right? So now we're gonna go down and we're gonna find our next hole. Our next hole is here. I'm actually gonna go even further. There's a second hole set of holes here. So I'm gonna go down to this one here, just to show you a little variation on the first one I did. One pull. Clockwise, again, a nice big wrap like this that tightens up on that head. There we go. 
and right in here is probably going to be the right length there we go coming up on the top Okay, and a little bit taut, and now the top, you loop it back around, give it a twist by hand, like such. You're sitting like this, but again, there's some looseness in there. So what I'm gonna do, put my pliers on, and I'm gonna switch it into reverse, give it a pull, give it a second little bit of a pull, a nice little loop, and we're done. So there you have another little variation on the first one. This one's a little harder to do your tail, but hey, it still works. You can tuck your tail in like so. And there you have your lock wire. So there's your lock wire, it's nice and straight, it's fairly tight. You got your loops over your heads nice and tight, and you got your tail there, so you're not gonna stab yourself because lock wire is extremely sharp. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna flip this thing around and show you single strand if you ever have that application. So on the other side, I've got some single strand stuff. So how do you do single strand? Well, single strand is just as it sounds. You do not twist it. You just have to find where the holes work best to ensure that any pair or any sequence of bolts are in the tightening direction. So where am I gonna start? Oh, I don't know, I'll start right here. Putting that straight through. Same amount on either side, as an example. And I'm gonna come around here. And I can't go into those, so the holes right here, I can't go into this hole right here because it's not really doing a good job. But I can go this way. Little couple pulls, little tugs to snug that up, and then back over. And the same thing happens over here. Some people like to go straight through it. I like to go all the way around it. Keep your finger there. And over, continuing. Where's this one? Again, it's in the same spot. These threads are probably all very similarly machined into this. And again, and as you can see, it's all pulling in the tightening direction. All right, so here is my single strand again. I'm almost at the end, but I need to finish it off. So where do I do that? So I basically started at the bottom just so I could show you at the top. It's easier to see. So here we are, we're finishing off. We've got the wire coming together, but what do you do with the wire? So what I like to typically do is I will come underneath And I will end it here. So this way I'm going to be turning counterclockwise. Reverse the pliers. And take up that little bit of slack there. A little bit of an extra twist. Roughly 7 to 10. And here we are on my tail. Again, there's not a ton of space. So what I sometimes like to do is bend my tail backwards. Come in with my pliers. Give it a little snug like that. There you go. Can't cut yourself each one of these. It's fairly tight. Again, and all these are in the tightening direction. This one I almost went straight through the head, but because it wasn't a straight shot, it was a bit of a dog leg inside, or because there was a bit of an angle here, I decided to go through that way. If it's straight, I don't go through. If it's on an angle, I will. But typically, as you see, these ones wrap all the way around, giving it the most amount of torque and the most amount of ability to hold that from vibrating in the loosening direction, which is what the problem is. So that's the single strand. But we've got some other things on here as well. We've got uh, an elbow with a uh, tube nut or a cap for a tube here and a jam nut. So how do you lock wire those together? Let's take a look. All right, now I've got my test block here, my demonstration piece flipped over. Now you can see here's where the tube nut is and the elbow and the jam nut. So first thing I wanna do is figure out which way is this all in tightening. So it's in tightening right, if we twist this to the right or towards the camera. 
and it's in tightening if you were to twist this to the right as well. It's all clockwise if you're looking at the face or righty tighty as they say. Not always, sometimes it's lefty tighty, but not in this application. So what I wanna do is I wanna find out and figure out, well, where would be the best place for my tail? So I could go from the jam nut to the tube nut or the cap here, but I don't want my tail up here. Even if I do a good job on that tail and I don't, I bend it over and it's not sharp. So I don't want the tail up here for when people grab or touch this or do anything here, especially if it's in an exposed area. I want to keep the tail hidden. So I'm going to put my tail probably down here. So I'm going to again, easy go through the provided holes and I'm going to twist this which way, right? Clockwise, right? We always start clockwise. I'm gonna give a couple twists there, and now I'm gonna find out where my hole is. It's right about there. Grab my pliers, one pull, and then again, you can see from this angle, it's a big oval. That tightens that up on the head, and now I'm gonna go in right here to my jam nut through the hole, help it out a little bit. You wanna guide that lock wire through little tighten, little snap there. And now I'm going the opposite direction, counterclockwise, twisting this, pliers, reverse direction, one pull, and another little one here, and a little bit more, and we are done. So there's where my tail is, but of course you do not want to leave your tail like that. So I'm gonna come in here, and I'm gonna do something like that. There's our tail, you can't cut yourself. This is nice and tight, it's in the tightening direction and it's pulling that tightening. So in this case, that jam nut won't get loosened off, but if that jam nut does loosen off, if this was not a tube nut and this was a line connected here, this could potentially start to move, which would cause stress on that line and potentially crack that line. And if there's fluids in that line, oils or hydraulics, or even fuel in that line, you could have a rupture, very, very bad. So here's how you lock wire this scenario right here. So short pieces of lock wire become very rigid very quickly and actually can poke you a lot more easily than something long. So for example, there's a long piece of lock wire, you know, I'm hitting it, you know, and it's moving, it's bending, it's deflecting. If this is short, I'm not gonna do that because I'll probably stab myself, so. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you learned a little something about how to do safety wire correctly. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.